What is the mass? Do I have to go? Or maybe a better question is, why should I want to go as often as possible? Here to help answer that is a man who's been a priest for almost 30 years and has celebrated thousands of masses, Father Riley. So a lot of people grow up with this experience of Mass, and their memory through childhood at Mass is just the parents telling them, be quiet, or, you, mm -hmm. you, or waking up uh, as a teenager, and they can do a Sip, half to kneel, go. stand. Yeah, yeah. Why is Mass something I should want to go to with my whole heart? And obviously you want to go. You've been celebrated, what, how many thousands of Masses in 29 years? There's only one Mass, right? Oh. But thousands and thousands and thousands of opportunities to make it present. Yeah, what happens at Mass? We know that it's true. We believe all of, uh, with all of our heart that, that the Last Supper is made present in a mysterious way. Mm. Uh, when, when Christ gathered with the apostles on the, the darkest, his most desperate night of his life, uh, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. A few moments later, he said, this is the cup or the chalice of my blood. But then, and only in Luke's Gospel, the specific words, do this in memory of me. Mm. So he was commanding us to keep doing that. Right. I and mean, this is why the center of Catholic worship isn't a pulpit. <laughs> right. It's, it's an altar. And, and some people think that maybe they were just, when he said, do this in memory of me, it's imitate what I've done as a mere memorial. Yeah. But we've always understood, and especially when you consider what Jesus said a year earlier, in John chapter 6, when he talks about my flesh being true food and my blood being true drink, that the apostles, or at least maybe John, figured out for the first time, this is how we are to do this. He wants us to receive him, body, blood, and soul, in this sacrificial meal. Now, some people would interpret that symbolically, mm -hmm. John chapter 6. Right? right? Like, di didn't he just mean you have to internalize my words and chew on them and have them be like your food? As he moves through that discourse, which yeah. he gave in the synagogue in Capernaum, at the beginning you could come to that conclusion, but he reaches that inescapable part where he starts hammering it home with words that you can't get around. But when you go back to the original biblical language, Greek, mm. the words are so clear and precise, there's really no way to argue your way around them. Well, and the, the crowd. So, so what are they? What, what, are, what are the words? Can I pull out the Bible? Yeah, yeah. If you can't pull out a Bible here, I don't know where you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in John 6, 52 and following are, are, the, are the, the, the crucial words. And so Christ says, Amen, amen, I say unto you. So he's swearing an oath. If you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Hmm. He who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I'll raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood true drink. The man who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. So th the crowd there yeah. understood exactly what he meant. And you know what happened? Right. They right. all walked away except the 12. Mm -hmm. They literally left him. So everybody walks away, mm -hmm. rejects Jesus, because this, this freaked them out. Yeah. And, and I guess it should have. Understandably. Yeah, Understandably. this is the most radical thing I, I think any founder of any religion has ever said. Absolutely. Right? So they walk away, and here he is with his apostles. Then what happens? What does he say? It's the only time I think in the Gospels Jesus sounds a little bit pathetic. Mm. He's been hurt. Mm. And he says, are you going to leave me too? <laughs> so Peter comes forward. It's one of two intelligent things he yeah. says in the course of the four Gospels. Do you want to read it? Yeah. Where are we? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. You know, so he didn't say, no, we're not going to leave you because we believe in transubstantiation. Right. He wasn't there yet, but they were <laughs> willing to trust him. Yeah. And they had faith strong enough to keep them well, with Christ. So that's faith. It's not getting the various doctrines and being able to explain them. It's saying, I trust you, Jesus. Precisely. And if you said, hey, uh, this is my body, this is my blood, then I, I'm good. It's all three of them. It's faith and hope and love. There it is. Faith with the mind, hope, trust with the will, and then love. They loved him. They knew he was leading him in the right direction. So this is what happens at Mass. This is my body given for you. He meant it literally in John chapter 6. This is intimate, holy communion. Mm. And the word of God, who proceeds forth from the mouth of the Father, 
has chosen to enter us in a particular way through our mouths in the context of a sacrificial meal. Beautiful. A beautiful so, so sacrificial meal. Mm -hmm. So we got a connection here, the Last Supper and, and the sacrifice of the cross. Mm -hmm. What's the connection? Is it just a representation of the Last Supper or is it representing more? The, and, and after that, I want to dive in a little more about what representation means in this context. So. The beautiful, uh, the beauty of the Mass is it, it's not merely making the Last Supper, which occurred in terms of chronological time 2,000 years ago, it's not merely making that present, yeah. but it's also Good Friday, the mm. separation of Christ's body and blood on the cross from which he died in his human nature. But it's also Easter Sunday, the wow. reuniting of body and soul in a glorified state. Uh, a lot of the time at Mass you'll see the priest put the two pieces of the broken host together again mm. to remind us that body and soul were brought back together again, but not merely living our mortal life, but the resurrected life of glory to which we're all called. Wow. So to, be, to have this be presented before us, what's the difference between this and just a, a memorial okay. service? Which I think a lot of non-Catholics perceive it that way. I have to confess, I don't like the use of the word presentation yeah. or representation, even though they're officially used sometimes, because especially representation, when people yeah. read that word, they hear in their mind's eye a lot of the time, representation, mm. which is symbolic. There was a word which was used in the Council of Trent, and sometimes in the new catechism of the Catholic Church, a perpetuation. Mm. Something which took place in the past is actually made present now. It's perpetuated. So it's not like we're reenacting it. Wow. Or even just re-presenting it. It's the same mass. And so perpetuated. And by what? the same mass, you're saying even the same sacrifice on the cross. Absolutely. Now, Scripture says that Jesus was sacrificed once for all. How do you square those things? So each mass is not a re-crucifixion. Mm. Each mass makes the past reality a present reality. Wow. So we're, we're, kind, of, we're kind of cutting through space and time here and, and coming to Calvary in some mystical sense. I huh? love the turn of phrase, divine power casually brushes aside space <laughs> and time <laughs> good. to make a reality present which transcends both of them. <laughs> I love that. You've thought of this a lot. What's it, <laughs> <I'm better. laughs> yeah. what's, it like, what's it like to celebrate Mass as a priest? What was that first Mass like? I tell you what, in our day and age, the word awesome is <laughs> overused. <laughs> that but it's the, only, awesome, it's the only word that really says it. <laughs> you, uh, you approach the altar with love, but also a, a holy sense of fear. In the sense that you're, you're, you're well aware of your own unworthiness and your mm. sinfulness. And of course, hopefully, you're working with the sacrament of confession to get beyond it and to be a saint. But then you're standing there completely unworthy. Mm. And the priest is called to speak the words of Christ, which make the whole thing real, which make his presence present. Boom. And <laughs> it's very humbling. It really is. I'll, I'll bet. Uh, okay, so what would you say to the, the Catholic out there who's, who would hear this and say, yeah, that's, those are great theological realities, but Mass is boring. I'm the first person to admit that the homily can sometimes be the most boring thing to happen during the course of an average week. <laughs> it just happens. Thank God the Mass is not about the homily. The homily serves yeah. its purpose well. It bridges the liturgy of the Word yeah. and prepares people for the, liturgy, for the liturgy of the Eucharist and hopefully gives them some practical connection, something that they can take out of the Mass when they're dismissed. The Mass is ending, go in peace. That's the favorite line of many people at mm. Mass. Yeah, <laughs> thanks be to God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At times we can be bored because we're used to being entertained. Mm. It's inescapable. Yeah. Uh, one cannot expect to embrace excitement every moment of one's life because of technology, largely, our attention spans have been shattered and made more and more and more brief. Yeah. Uh, and Mass takes more than 30 seconds. It takes true. an effort to allow yourself to be actively engaged in the Mass as it takes an effort to allow yourself to be actively engaged in a football game. Yeah. If you don't know what's going on down there in the field of green and you don't understand the various plays or the maneuvers or the rules, it's a bunch of crashing into each other. Mm. If you get it, and if you make the effort, you get something out of mm. it. You, you can enjoy a, a sports event. So really, the, the people are bringing the whole, the whole wrong paradigm to Mass if they're saying it's boring. They're sitting there in, in pews, which they're associating with, I'm an audience, and I'm watching, mm -hmm. Father, entertain me. 
They're meant to be actively engaged and drawn in. There are two priesthoods at the Mass. The ministerial priesthood of the man behind the altar in persona Christi, offering the sacrifice. But the people in the pews are not just passive spectators. They are members of the royal priesthood of the faithful. Yeah. They are meant to offer the same sacrifice. And as Pope St. Leo the Great said, not merely by watching the hands of the priest. They, after they receive the sacred victim, offer the Son of the Father from the altar of their heart. Whew. Wow. So that's not sitting down and being entertained by someone. Not at all. <laughs> that's it's categorically work. radically different. It's work and it's yeah. a responsibility. You have a, a certain expectations of us. Yeah. Uh, we and, and God have certain expectations of you. Mm. Don't be passive spectators. You're meant to be actively engaged and you have a ministry to fulfill at the foot of the altar as you exercise your royal priesthood. Hey, you have a different view during the Mass than most of us ever get to have, right? So while someone might be sitting in a pew thinking, Father's boring, uh, I, I'm, I'm often <laughs> sympathizing with the Father, thinking, man, if you came on the other side of the pulpit, looked at everybody else, boy, uh -huh. that's boring looking. Do, do you get the impression that a whole lot of people are sitting out there clueless as to what's actually going on? It depends on where you're celebrating Mass. Yeah. And thank God there's almost always a few, and you sort of focus on those who really do seem to be hanging in every word, focus. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an old prayer, a priest of God, say this Mass as if it were your first Mass, your last Mass, your only Mass. Mm. There are some people who go to Mass that way, and that's good advice for anybody attending Mass, participating in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. You do see those who don't seem to be engaged, who aren't interested. Uh, part of your job as a priest is to do your best to try to pull them into it, without theatrics, without calling attention to yeah, yourself, yeah. But, but the Holy Spirit's with us, mm -hmm. so we give it our best. Uh, the first Mass, you might think, was perfect, but even Judas was there. Hmm. He probably wasn't paying too much attention to what was going on. <laughs> yeah. Can you give me one or two tips for how to come to Mass ready to jump in and be more actively engaged? One of the best ways to be prepared for Mass, do the readings ahead of time. Hmm. If you can do them well before Mass, or better yet, even the night before, before you hit the sack. This is old, uh, uh, an old Jesuit trick, if you want to put it that way. Uh, the mind receives the word and even when you're sleeping, it continues to work on it. Ooh, I love that. One thing you might do is, is if, if you maybe read it the morning of, uh, try to figure out what the homily might be. Nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna have a better homily than the priest would give. Yeah, yeah. But, but preparing, preparing the soil uh, by reading the word, it, it establishes a, a receptive disposition. You are ready then to hear the word proclaimed at mass and that much more ready to actually receive the word made flesh as he presents himself in the Holy Eucharist. That's a simple and beautiful tip. So what happens at Mass? In the words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, the curtain of time is torn in two, you and me are there. We're there at Calvary. We're there at the empty tomb. And why? Because it didn't satisfy the love of God for you that you just hear about him by watching a video. Apparently the only thing that satisfied his love for us is that you and me would plug in directly to what he did for us. This is my body given up for you, not just the whole world, but for you watching right now.